This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassion, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. On this wonderful afternoon, you are in agreement with me that God is faithful. He's faithful from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. I'm Bishop Marcus A. Johnson, Sr., and I'm your host today on the New Harvest Midday Inspirational Mealtime Saturday Question and Answer. And I'm glad that you would come on board that we can agree God is faithful. Let us pray that God will bless this mealtime as others come on board to join us. Father, we thank you that you are the God of all the universe, all the earth. You're the God of the living and the dead. And there's not a soul on this side of eternity or the other that you are not fully aware of. You said that the hairs on our heads are numbered, numbered by you. Even we don't know that number, but you do. We pray, God, that you will be glorified this afternoon as we eagerly partake of your truth in your word and that it will nourish us as we digest it by faith and that it will supply for us all the fuel that we will need spiritual fuel, energy, to walk out our life by faith according to your will. Bless us wherever we strive, wherever we struggle. Grant us victory to your glory. Bless those, God, that are hurting from the opposite end of the earth all the way into this region. Grant mercy, grant grace, grant your people peace, and we will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And it looks like the, the, the one that is the farthest away is on board, and that's Pastor Jacob Bonney. He's our pastor in our New Harvest Church in Tanzania. And they've just had a tremendous baptism. And he sent me the pictures. They're beautiful. We will post them. We will let you know when they'll be posted just so you can appreciate the wonderful work that is taking place in New Harvest, Tanzania, Africa. And we look forward to the day when it's safe to travel. And I would love to take a delegation with me as we go to Tanzania and as we witness the work of God being done there. But we thank God for every place where God's people are serving God in the beauty of holiness. Well, today is Saturday, our question and answer. And I'm going to ask you up front, remind you, hit that like button, please. Let that be a part of your sign on when you come on board hit that like button. We keep reminding you just to know that that's all a part of helping to draw others to our page. I've received some messages from individuals I had not a clue were watching or that I even know. And yet I'm finding out that they are finding us. So when you hit that like button, you're really helping others to find us. And it's really not about finding us. It's about finding the inspiration that comes from God's word on this platform. And we're so grateful and we're so thankful to God. On last Saturday, we entertained the question or in the lesson entitled, What is Faith? What is Faith? Let me just kind of recap last week. There were four major points that we made last week. First, faith. Faith is knowing God is who he says he is. Quote, I am that I am. 
Faith is knowing God is who he says he is. I am that I am. Belief. Belief is the conviction that his word is the eternal truth. Belief is the conviction that his word is the eternal truth. Faith believes who he is. Belief is convicted in what he says. Trust is total confidence in God's providential how. So my trust is agreeing with God no matter how he chooses to move. I agree with God. Which then brings me from faith, who he is, belief, what he says, trust, how he moves, hope is divine expectation that rests upon faith, belief, and trusting in God. Hope is divine expectation resting upon faith, belief, and trust in God. And so the answer to the question last week, what is faith? Having faith is 100% confidence in knowing who God is. 100% confidence in believing his word. 100% confidence in trusting how God moves. And therefore, 100% confidence in having hope that Romans 8.28 always works. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. That's what we were able to agree upon last week. And this was our takeaway last week. Ours is not so much having the answer, but knowing the answer Jesus has us. Ours is not so much having the answer to all of the questions that we have. It's really knowing that the answer, Jesus, has us. And so now let's look at our question that we will address today. This is a good one, y'all. All of them are good. All of them are good. Hello, Bishop. I've started reading Joyce Meyer's book, Battlefield of the Mind. And I highly recommend this book to anyone listening today. She encourages the reader to think about what they are thinking about. <laughs> That's good. Think about what you're thinking about. The level of awareness has been startling for me as I had to confront the degree to which my mind just races from thought to thought. Let's raise our hand and let's say we all can relate to that. How am I, Sometimes even trying to go to sleep at night and our mind is just racing all over everywhere. One thought after another thought. And sometimes it's hard to go to sleep because we can't slow the mind down. And many of my thoughts are self-serving, fear-filled, judgmental, untrue, unfair, and just plain negative. One thing that I like about those that submit questions, I love the transparency. I love the honesty because that's the only way we're going to really get to re the root of where we're trying to go. We got to be honest. We got to be for real. God desires a, 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 a honest heart, a sincere heart. As a result of my negative thinking, many of my actions and conversations are selfish anxious, judgmental, etc. I realize that I can be hypocritical of others because I'm thinking very disapproving thoughts about them. As I'm trying to get my mind, actions, and conversations under control, how do I really take on the mind of Christ? Thank you, Bishop, for answering my question. All right, so now click that like button and let's now put on our thinking caps, <laughs> thinking caps. Let's put on our thinking hearts and let's now dig into this. I'm going to call the lesson today, 
Mind of Christ Transplant Recipient. The Mind of Christ Transplant Recipient. And I'm going to use Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies. Don't you hear Paul throwing these suppositions in here? If, 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 if. It's very rhetorical. He is assuming and presuming that we automatically understand that our consolation is in Christ, our comfort in his love, and there is a fellowship in the spirit and their bowels and mercies. We're full of that. He says, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? Then he makes this point. Here's the transplant. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Here's a highlight number one. And I want you to do more of absorbing this so you can take notes if you will. But if you don't even take the notes, just take it in and we will make sure that we get these notes to you. I want you to hear this. Highlight number one, the mind of Christ transplant recipients. The mind of Christ transplant recipients takes on Christ's character. The mind of Christ transplant recipients takes on Christ's character. I want you to think of the mind of Christ as the organ that's being transplanted. So the organ, the mind of Christ transplant recipient, you and I that are receiving it, takes on Christ's character. Well, how would we describe Christ's character? Comforting love, fellowship of unity, heart of mercy towards others through humility. We see that. That's given to us in Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, Paul could say, let this mind be in you. Let this organ be transplanted in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That Jesus' character is comforting love, is a fellowship of unity, is a heart of mercy towards others. And how does he do it? Through unity, through humility, through humility. Here's another way to restate that. Through humility, Christ's mind offers love, fellowship, and mercy. Through humility, Christ's mind, the organ that the recipient is receiving as the transplant, is able to offer love, fellowship, and mercy. And here's a key insight. Here's a key insight. Christ's humility directs his love towards others, enabling the fellowship of unity by extending mercy and grace to others wherever needed. That is just the nature of Christ. So his mind, the way Christ thinks, he directs his love towards others. We know that's true. And then he then allows us to come into a unity with him. And then he extends it to us his mercy and his grace wherever we need it. That's what the mind of Christ does. So if we are recipients of his mind, if that's the transplant that we're taking on, then we're taking on love towards others, fellowship of unity with Christ and with others who believe, and we're extending mercy and we are extending grace. God bless you, Sydney. God bless you, sweetheart. 
God bless you. Listen, John 12, 32. Look at the humility and love of God. And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Well, I used to think years ago when I read that, that that meant if I be lifted up from the earth, that meant praising God. That meant praising him. Well, that's not necessarily wrong, but that's not really what this text is talking about. Jesus said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Be lifted up how? Not, not so much in praise here. If I be lifted up on the cross, if I be lifted up on Golgotha's hill, if I be lifted up on Calvary's mountain, then I will draw all men unto me. What does that mean? If I become the sin offering, if I become a curse that we might be made the righteousness of God, then Jesus is saying, I can draw all men unto me, but I've got to die. Don't you see his humility? And don't you see his love extended to us? That's the mind of Christ. And then look at Luke 23, verse 34. Look at his grace and his mercy. Then said Jesus, Father, he's on the cross, y'all. He said in John 12, 32, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Now Luke 23 and 34, he's on the cross. He is being crucified. He is being spat upon. He is being cursed. He is being railed upon. He is being rejected. His disciples forsook him and fled. And listen to Jesus, who is who is being the very epitome of unity and love. He says, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And while he was praying for us, and they parted his raiment and cast lots. They were gambling over his garments. They were making a mockery out of him. But Jesus, through humility, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, was hanging on the cross, extending his love to us to be the payment for our salvation. And then he's praying while he's being crucified, extending grace and mercy. And then Luke 23, 43, look at the fellowship of unity. We read about this in Philippians chapter two, verses one through four, but now look at it being acted out in the gospel. Luke 23 and 43, look at the fellowship of unity. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Look at this fellowship of unity. He's telling a sinner on the cross that I'm going to save you today and you will be unified with me. So the question to be asked, how do we obtain the transplant of Christ's mind? How do we do it? Because we realize now if we're going to have the mind of Christ it's going to require a transplant. We're literally going to have to give up our mind in exchange for the mind of Christ. Here's the thought. Transplants require matching a blood type. Come on now. Stay with me. Stay with me. Anyone that knows about organ transplant, and maybe somebody on here knows someone that received an organ transplant, or maybe someone on here has received one. But transplant requires that there has to be a matching of blood type. Well, guess what? Only a born-again, blood-washed, blood-bought individual is eligible for a Christ's mind transplant. A sinner cannot have a mind of Christ transplant because the blood doesn't match and that and they will automatically reject it but only a born again blood wash blood blood individual is eligible for a Christ transplant because of the blood matching when we are born again our blood type matches the blood of Jesus hallelujah because he washes us with his blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Leviticus 17, 11 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the individual is in the blood. Come on now. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. And so Jesus is the great high priest seated on the right hand of the Father, sprinkling his blood on the mercy seat, sprinkling his blood on the altar. Did you make a mistake yesterday? Jesus was sprinkling the blood on the mercy seat. Did we make an error today? Something we failed to do, something we did that we shouldn't have? He's sprinkling the blood on the mercy seat. Come on. So the blood matches. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Here's evidence that the blood matches. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The blood matches, y'all. So how do we obtain the mind of Christ transplant? After confirming the blood match, after it has been identified by heaven that our blood matches the blood of Christ because we have been born of born again, then how do we get this transplant? Matthews eleven twenty nine is perhaps really I should have made this the key verse for the lesson. Here's the key verse for this lesson, or one of the key verses, Matthews eleven twenty nine. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. We'll find a sense of peace when we are yoked to Christ. Now, when the scripture says, take my yoke upon you, Jesus said, and learn of me, then let's understand this, that having the mind of Christ is not immediately manifested. It is done over time. It's a process of walking with God. It's a process of practicing the mind of Christ. But we've got to learn of him. For he's meek and he's lowly. That's his character. And he will provide for us peace. Highlight number two. Highlight number two. The mind of Christ transplant recipient must take on the yoke of Christ. We, there's no way to have the mind of Christ and not be yoked to him. Because that's the only way we will learn of him. We've got to walk where he walks. We've got to occupy the space that he occupies. We've got to see what he's seeing. We've got to hear what he hears. And then we've got to learn how Christ responds in every situation. Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 3. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Well, that happens when we're yoked to Christ with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That's in every situation. If we're yoked to Christ, we will see how Christ manifests his humility, lowliness, and meekness, how he's long-suffering, we will see it forbearing or forgiving one another in love and endeavoring, always looking for an opportunity for unity of the Spirit by being connected in the peace of God. We're really talking about a transplant now. And if you, if you haven't, hit that like button. Hit that like button right now. Hit that thumbs up saying, oh, I agree with God. This is true. This is now talking about a real transplant. Galatians 2 and 20 tells us about this transplant. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. This is me giving up my mind and taking on the mind of Christ. I am crucified with him because I've got to die. I've got to lay me down. I've got to tell my mind to shut up. I've got to tell my mind to be still and know that I am God. I've got to say that to my own mind. I've got to say to my own mind, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord. 
I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ, his mind, liveth in me. His mind is functioning. That's the organ transplant. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I give up my control and I receive the authority. I receive the sovereignty of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I give a warning. Here's a warning. Refusal to take on the yoke of Christ will cause the recipient, the transplant recipient to reject the transplant organ, risking their witness. So if we refuse to be yoked to Christ because we are so determined to do it our way, because we're so set in our own mind that it's going to be like this, or this is what I want, then what we're going to do, we're setting ourselves up to reject the organ that has been transplanted. And then we risk, we risk our witness. And if we risk our witness, if we damage our witness, then we also forfeit the promised blessing. Why do that? Why do that? Philippians 4, chapter 6, verse 7. Now hold on to this. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving becomes our devotion through praying, through seeking God for requests, through praising him. And then it says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. It will do what? Highlight number three, the mind of Christ transplant recipient through spiritual devotion, prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, establishes peace with God. What does that accomplish? It maintains, it helps us to now maintain that matching of that transplant organ, of that mind of Christ. It's through my devotion, through my prayer, through my seeking God, through my thanksgiving. It keeps everything in perfect harmony. I don't want the mind of Christ's organ to be rejected. So I've got to keep harmony. Philippians 4, verses 8 through 9. Here it is. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, that's eight criteria. Think on these things. So that means before we allow a thought to park in our minds, it's got to be true. It's got to be honest. It's got to be just. It's got to be pure. It's got to be lovely. It's got to be of a good report. It's got to be a virtue. It's got to be praiseworthy. Then we can think on these things. And those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. We won't reject the organ. Here's an insight. Only the word of God is true, honest, pure, lovely, a good report, virtuous, and praiseworthy to maintain the peace of God. It will safeguard the organ transplant. So here's a highlight number four. The mind of Christ transplant recipient through thinking the word of God maintains a healthy transplant and lives the abundant life. That's how we don't reject the mind of Christ. We don't reject that transplant organ John 10 and 10 makes it real clear. The thief cometh not, but to reject the organ. The thief cometh not before to steal and to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Don't reject the organ. Think on the word of God. The mind of Christ transplant recipient takes on Christ's character. The mind of Christ recipient 
is yoked to Christ. The transplant recipient establishes peace with God. Thinks the word of God. Beloved, if we are committed to thinking the word of God, we will safeguard our transplant and we will find ourselves as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We will become the word as the word makes us just like Christ. And finally, and when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow at 930 for the adult Bible class. I'll see you at 11 o'clock for the youth and adult at 930 and 11 o'clock for our worship service. May God bless you. May God supernaturally safeguard your mind of Christ transplant in Jesus' name. God bless you. Enjoy your transplant mind today. Be blessed.